Today we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of shopping vintage handbags. And I have one bag in particular that I wanted to kind of focus on while everybody's kind of hunting and looking for this bag. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Melissa, AKA Mouse Dara here on YouTube. And I have an admitted obsession with handbags. I'm a bit of a handbag enthusiast, some would say, and I have a slight obsession with finding a good vintage bag, which is where this video is going to lead us. Now, throughout the years, I have talked about some vintage bags that I was buying that have come and come back around pretty strong. I, I, I mean, I feel like, not gonna toot my own horn, but I feel like I'm a bit of like a handbag fortune teller, can I say that? I feel like I have like the vibe of like what's gonna come back and what's gonna be hot. And with that being said, I have been able to find some very, very, very hot bags for very, very, very cheap. And I have been able to pass that information along to you guys, which a lot of you have told me you've been able to score some great bags based on this fortune telling. Now, before we continue this video, can we just make sure to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below? It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks guys. So with these bags becoming hot again, I'm thinking saddlebag, anything Bottega, anything Fendi baguette, all these vintage styles, anything Dior, now the pink Dior being reissued, all of these bags that I've talked about in the past, I love them so much, not only because I find them really cool, but also the fact that they were so reasonably priced. I feel like that's also a great part of finding the bags before they become hot is that you get them at a deal and then you start seeing the prices go up and you're like, yes, I scored. That's a big part of what I love about the vintage hunt. But there is a point in vintage, and I wanna use this one bag as an example, that it just becomes not worth going vintage anymore. And I feel like a lot of us get so stuck on the goal of finding the bag we were looking for that when we do end up finding it, because vintage it is, it's a hunt, it's a challenge, it's fun. But I feel like a lot of times we find the bag in question and it's just like way overpriced and I feel like we all need to know where to draw the line and we need to be smart about it. So I wanted to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of buying vintage. Now we all know what the good is. The good is you get a bag that you got for an amazing price, a bag that not everybody's going to carry. You're an individual, you're showing your style, you're doing your own thing. It's sustainable, you're upcycling, literally. I can name infinite reasons why shopping vintage designer handbags is incredible but there are some downsides once these bags do end up picking up steam I am thinking about this one in particular when you look for this bag online this is what you're going to search and this is how I find them Bottega Veneta Intrecciato Vanity these will usually pop up the thing is when I bought this bag two years ago or three years ago at this point this is a mint condition. I paid under $200 Canadian for this bag. Bottega was not cool. This was just a vibe. This was a moment. This was me being like, this will be such a cute mini bag. I love the color. And then people started going on the hunt for it. So the second one I ended up purchasing, I ended up getting this one for 400 US. At that point I was still like, okay, it's worth it, it's a good price, it's in mint condition, it's a classic color, but already I was like, meh, it's getting up there. Recently, I have had people message me that they found this bag on reseller sites selling for like $1,300, $1,400. So I wanted to put some stuff into perspective before people pull the trigger because I do end up missing some DMs and I don't want anybody to miss this important information. The latest vanity that I found is this one over here. It is the smaller size of the vanity and it is nowhere near in great condition like these two were. These two like are mint condition. This one needs some TLC. So this is the smaller size of the vanity pouch as you can see. it The wear on it is significant compared to the other two and this was listed at $610 Canadian. I had some credit so I applied the credit towards this handbag 
and basically what I saved in credit I'm going to be spending at the cobbler to repair this bag because you can see there's some wear here on the pull tie I need to stick this back there's a lot of wear on the strap I'm gonna need to reglaze this or wrap it the leather really 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 needs to be conditioned as well but for me finding this color was definitely worth it but that was my cap I told myself I would never spend more than six hundred dollars on this bag and that was really my limit where I drew the line some resellers really take advantage of the fact that a bag is hot and they'll find it for cheap cheap and then resell it for like 12 times the price which is business I get it it's completely business but we the consumer need to be smarter about it now reason I'm getting at this is if you love this bag and the reason you're getting this bag is because you want the Jody, which is the new version I guess of this the Jody. this is called the new Bottega Jody. Actually, this is not even the newest version. There's a newer version of this bag that actually sits a little bit nicer. And a lot of people were buying the vanity case because they were like, it's like getting the mini Jody, but at a way better price. Now this mini Jody, if you're looking on a fashion file, if you're looking on resale sites, there are a ton in the market. A lot of people are starting to resell this. So this is when you need to see handbags, kind of like the stock market, kind of play around with value. Go look at the price of the vintage versus the price of the resale market. This bag right now, I have found so many of these in like mint condition between 1300 and 1900. Fashion File has a bunch up around 18, 1900, but Fashion File is always the most expensive on resale sites. They are, in my opinion, the, the, the high bar for price points. Um, so if you go on the smaller resale sites that are all also very, very reliable, you don't need to worry, still get your goods authenticated. I always say, if you're not buying directly from the boutique, have them authenticated. I will leave two authenticators down below that I personally love. But this to me is the perfect example of when you need to look at vintage versus new, the price difference. In my opinion, as much as I love these vanity pouches, a big part of why I love them is the score behind them. I don't know that I would love this bag as much if I'd paid $1,300 for it when I knew I could have gotten this one for like $1,400. You know what I mean? Same thing with the saddlebag. The saddlebag, in my opinion, on the resale market has reached a point of, okay, come on guys. Like I was buying my saddlebags four or five years ago for like 80 bucks. Now I'm looking at the one that I paid under $200 for and it's like at resale $3,500. It's like, are you crazy pants? For $3,500, I'll just buy the new one that looks exactly the same. Another thing about buying vintage, I want you guys to know this. You guys know I'm the biggest supporter of eBay. I love eBay. I think it is the place to score some gems, but I was recently sold a very fake Fendi baguette, but when I say very fake, it was like a triple A beautiful Fendi baguette that I would never have known was fake unless I had it authenticated, which I always do when my goods come in. So this Fendi baguette that I picked up, I'll insert the picture right here, I thought was a great price, but I mean it was great for what it was. It was, it came up to almost a thousand dollars Canadian by the time it was landed and everything, but it was a beaded Fendi, so I was like, okay, no, this is like, this is a great price for the bag itself. So I was excited. The bag arrived. I literally, you know, when you get that feeling in you and you're like, okay, this bag is too perfect. It like, this is supposed to be from 1998. This bag is too perfect. Either this person literally took the bag, bought it, was obsessed with it and kind of left it in a glass cupboard for her entire life and now just decided to sell it or it's fake. Had the bag authenticated, came back fake, obviously, ended up having to like argue with the person. The person who sold it to me was like, oh, you shouldn't have any problem reselling the bag. And I was like, lady, are you kidding me, lady? I will not sell a fake bag. So anyways, I ended up sending the bag back, which eBay does definitely protect you, but that is definitely one of the ugly sides of buying vintage. It's a leap of faith. And I didn't follow my own rule, which is always buy from power sellers. This person was not a power seller. It was my own mistake. I got really excited about the bag because I thought it was such a good deal. But all this to say, there are some incredible, incredible 
fakes on the market, especially the saddle bag, the Fendi baguette. There are some mirror qualities that like literally all the stamps, everything's in the right place, but a good authenticator, again, I will list my two favorite down below, will spot it a mile away. So you have to be careful with that, but don't let it stop you. And my last thing I have to tell you guys about, I know I've already mentioned this in my tips for shopping vintage, but this is something everybody needs to be reminded all the time. A lot of times you guys send me DMs of bags that you love that are vintage, and you send me the picture and I usually get back to you within like two, three hours, and I'm like, oh my God, I love it, buy it. And then you guys get back to me and you're like, it's sold. Don't sleep on vintage. If it's a good price, if it's a bag you like. Right now I'm telling you, it's all about plain Jane vintage Chanel's, the medallion totes, anything that's not like flap Chanel, that's discreet Chanel, like the new Chanel I just picked up, this one over here, people are going wild for these. They're still really on the affordable side. People are loving, loving, loving them and we need to jump on board before everybody else starts upsing the prices. I have one on my mind right now that I'm like, I need to just buy you. You're the perfect summer bag. You're gonna be added to my cart. And as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I slept on it. I slept on it, it's probably not available anymore. So guys, that is my biggest trip. Do not sleep, do not doubt it. You know your best style, you know if you're gonna wear it, you do you. It doesn't matter if anybody else loves it. That's the beauty of vintage. You need to love it, and that's what's important. Okay, those are my quick tips, but again, like I said, I could literally talk vintage bags for like hours and hours and hours on end. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to leave a comment down below that you wanna see more of these, and I don't have anything else to say besides I love you so, 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 so much. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.